Well, after watching that video of that chick uh, doing various uh, difficult things, you know, like going to FBI training and uh, doing uh, intense paintball playing with teams and stuff and uh, doing some military type training a little bit, uh, it got me, you know, really psyched that I got to get my body moving more and uh, get in really good shape because it hasn't been improving for a very long time and it's super depressing. I mean, really bad. And uh, I think one of the reasons is because I don't have a reason to walk around. Like even walking into town, is, which is what I used to do for exercise, you know, I'd walk at least an hour a day minimum. And then quite often during the week, you know, do three, four hours and walking. I'd like walking. But I don't like walking without destination. Which is a huge problem because I don't want to go into town. And there are no other destinations. I guess I could, you know, one thing I could do, it's dangerous, but I could try and get to places in the Bosque that I haven't been to lately. The problem is that, that you know, all the underbrush grows over and I don't feel comfortable staggering through underbrush right now, waddling through it. Oh, this uh, chart is doing great over there. It's funny, I don't even eat that stuff. I should eat the stuff I grow. That'd be bright. Uh, no destination. No destinations I can get to. One thing I can do is have my friends use my weed whacker. I have a really cool weed whacker that has a circular saw blade as instead of a string or something. So it can cut through heavier stuff. So they could clear out more trails for me. Um, of course, if there was more people here, the trails get cleared automatically. And there's more people to do it. But their feet themselves kind of make the trails so that, you know, it turns it into a, a better trail. It's less grown over. Uh, so right now I have very limited areas I can walk to and li very little inter interesting things to see. Here's a bunch of uh, radishes growing. Those are totally ready to harvest. Some of them are past ready. And probably we'll just let this go to seed a lot and then we'll collect the seeds. And next year hopefully the whole agricultural plan will be such that we have a lot more prepared gardens and I have a lot more people who want to eat stuff. Right now I grow more than I can eat and I don't grow quite the variety I would want. Oh, here's some carrots coming up over here. Planted too densely as often is the case. Common problem. That's the thing is if I try and assemble a team to come here like next June and July to do agricultural things, the problem is that people who aren't trained do stuff wrong. Like I have a whole bunch of trees that we planted one year and uh, I walked by to check out how they were doing and there was a guy so kind of managing them but they were doing real great and I tried to tell them how to do better and all those trees died. Now maybe it wasn't their fault, I don't know. There's you know a number of things that could have happened. It could have been a really dry year the next year uh, and maybe some of them are still in there and I didn't notice them. Because, like, I've got a garden through here that I can't get to right now that we put in years and years and years and years ago. And some of the stuff lived and thrived, like some roses that were real spindly and uh, some rosemary. And I don't know what else we put in there. But it was an experimental garden. And uh, so we need to go in there and kind of excavate out and find out what plants are left. Uh Maybe for a moment I should just be here instead of just seeing everything around me as a future option. I don't know. I got too much stress on me. I, I take on too much stress, too much of a weight of the world. When I'm supposed to solve things, do things. Hi, goofy dogs. What you doing? Uh. 
and just the weight of all the things that I need to do to make the future I want make this very difficult. That's why I have to partner with people. But uh, everybody wants an unbalanced partnership where I'm given everything and they're not given anything except if they feel like it, if it seems fun. They want to play. And I need other people like me who are, who are crazy about making a place that is just so radically different culturally and the people in it have, have trained themselves to live in a different way that, that we're assembling a culture. I say that and I don't know if people really think about what I mean. But I mean, you know, with like cross-cultural anthropology, you can measure different attributes and you can collect uh, rituals and ways of doing things. And, and, and we can actually have here uh, an, an assembled, rational, different way of doing things. And we don't have to have just one. This is a big space. And I'd love to get more land nearby next to it and have even more space. But different groups here can operate in different ways. I mean, an obvious one is that for some people, being vegetarian or even vegan is absolutely important to them. And they should be able to have the kitchen focused on that for them and everything, their group, their whole group. That could be one of the identifying factors of any one group. And so, especially as I think about larger social distancing, having groups of people that are isolated from each other, but near each other, but have agreements not to uh, cross infect and uh, monitoring people very carefully because um, I don't think this uh, pandemic's over and I think it's really bad and that you can get it over and over again. So I think uh, any comfort that people feel right now is misplaced, you know? And so I like this idea anyway of kind of extended families or, or small neighborhoods that, you know, they got their own root cellar, they have their own restaurants, uh, they have uh, their own composting toilets and showers and saunas and uh, housing, everything that they need um, to have a good time. And that actually we can, this land is such, that I know, I know it really well, that we can easily divide areas off and have people be uh, quarantined as groups, even if they're not sick. It's an excellent way to think about the future potentially. Got to make some hard decisions to do that. And it would require massive investment. I mean, there's, there's dirt roads I would have to pave because you can't use them in the rainy season. So the vision of this place as a, as a real echo village, as the best at designed echo village in the world, and functionally having a lot of people here, uh, you know, an ecological town uh, is a fantastic vision and it's extremely ambitious. And have it be low tech, because there's, pla there's places like Google and people like Bill Gates that talk about setting up things and they often make the mistake of creating something that's too technological, which makes perfect sense since that's where they're coming from. But we need to pick and choose which technologies we want and how we use them and how they fit into the culture. Because most of the technology we use is part of the destruction of the planet. And it isn't necessarily more fulfilling in any way. I don't think it's, you know, as fulfilling to have a life where you, you know, just don't know anyone, aren't close to anyone, play video games. Uh, I realize some video games are social, and I'm not trying to pick on anybody in particular, but there's a lot of people who, who as, especially as population density increases, they kind of check out of society, and that's because society is designed wrong for them. You know, like you look at Japan and there's, you know, even I forget the name of it, but there's a class of people who have checked out. They've just given up. In a sense, I've given up by, by preferring to, to live here alone. I mean, I don't want to live here alone forever, but obviously I've made choices that have divided me from other people. That wasn't the real goal. There's a lot of other, it's more complex than that, but, but, um, 
I think it's because we, we come from such different places. We have such different uh, cultural views that we have a hard time talking about. And we sometimes relate poorly because uh, because we don't have social agreements. And I think that we could make kind of blobs of people that do have those social agreements and that we can def define, define various cultures uh, with some shared values among all of them. A basis of, of you know required values and then a lot of stuff where people make their own decisions as a group how they want to to act and then people could switch groups you know it could be that there's a group of people who are primarily young and do things young people do although young people do vary of course uh, other people who are kid focused that's a big one like I don't want to be in a, in, a, in a group that is primarily focused on the kids and that, that, you know, I have to kind of bow down and serve whatever decisions get made or use of resources that, because we're focused so much on the children. That's the big goal. I want there to be groups like that, but I don't want to have to deal with kind of being forced to have that be the biggest, most important thing. I haven't had that problem a ton. But I have had families here who don't control their kids. And I, I don't feel comfortable telling their kid what to do. I did one time. The kid was throwing arrows. Uh, and uh, that's not appropriate. I mean, he was like, you know, I don't know, 7, 8, 12, whatever. I can't tell. Short. And, uh, yeah, he's like throwing arrows around. It's like they're toys. And uh, they weren't those really super sharp hunting arrows. But still... Um, you know, it's just like you got to teach gun safety, you got to teach archery safety. And the, the dad was just like, didn't care, even when I mentioned it, like, you know, you shouldn't throw arrows around. And, uh, and, and the dad didn't do anything about it. And so eventually I kind of snapped at the kid and I was like, knock it off. That is, you know, bad or something. I don't know what I said, but it wasn't a good tone. And the dad looked at me like, whoa. And uh, that guy never came back. <laughs> Which is fucking fine with me because I don't want to deal with people who can't control their kids. I don't want to deal with kids who can't control themselves. So that's just one other attribute. Um, I guess another group type uh, could be partying all the time. But to be honest, uh, within I, I would consider a core value to be that in the kind of culture I want to design, then a core value for all groups is that partying is not your primary goal. And I understand that there's play and that kids need to play, although I think their play can be made more useful and, and develop them better. And then there's you know adolescents and people in their 20s or something who just want to play. But I think also there that we can set up better things than just having a consumption, you know, of, of electronic music and dancing around and saying some pseudo spiritual words or something. I think we can do better than that. And I, I want to be with the people who want to do better than that and, and who do actually uh, have an active life that is creating a better world and a, and, a, and, a, and a better them. There's people like in their 20s, they just waste their 20s. I was working my ass off. I was studying and reading and uh, I become a very different person than those other people. Uh, you know, so it's like, it's very tricky to know how to make these decisions about what we care about, what we want to say, this is the base attributes you have to have to operate within this system of communities. And then what are the various popular ways that a, a community, what are the attributes that, that they could define uh, to have their own identity and, and get what they really want. I think that's a super useful uh, thing. We can make templates of agreements because a lot of the community efforts I've seen that fail, they make no effort at that. And I, don't, I wouldn't trust them to join and they fall apart before they begin because they're not willing. Maybe they're, I mean, I, I have a hard time making up rules and stuff, but I feel like instead of making up rules, we can make up lumps of rules that people agree with 
you know, like how you treat land or uh, what businesses you run, what kind of people you just des you desire to join the group, you know, so that you can attract the kind of people that you are that you you want to be around. What financial agreements do you make? How do you eat? Uh, how do you deal with things sexually and with relationships? Do you have guidelines around that? Uh, you you better, because <laughs> otherwise you're going to have problems. Anyway, that's not a bad idea. <laughs>